Hi everyone, today we are going to be doing a walkthrough of phase two of the bomb lab. I'm assuming that your VPN is already running and that you can log in to the Linux machines with no trouble. I remember my bomb happens to be inside of documents CS 281 example bombs and then we're still working on good old bomb one. As you can see, um, in addition to the first three pieces that we found in our bomb.tar, uh, inside of my bomb, I now have a file uh, called text.txt. If I use cat to read out the contents of that file, I have my answer to phase one already saved. So that way I don't have to remember it from one run to the next. Um, in order to work on phase two, we're going to need to go one step farther and disassemble the bomb. So in order to do that, we need to take an object dump, dash D, and that's for disassemble. Then bomb is the outcome of that. Uh, if we just do that, it'll print out everything to the standard out. So we'll see all of it. Um, we'd like to be able to look through that like it's a file. So we're going to redirect that to a file called bomb.s. Now, if we look again, there's a new file named bomb.s. And if we use your preferred text editor for reading through files, mine's vi. Um, I'm going to go ahead and then search for phase two. So in order to search, you use backslash and the name of the function you're looking for, in my case, phase two. And it sure looks like we might actually be inside of it. We are. So here we're going to uh, take a look at what's going on inside of the code. So first thing, I'm going to take a print screen and then I'm going to draw all over it. When you are looking at a piece of assembly code, the first thing to do is to try to um, recognize what all the different pieces of it are. So if we start with um, the addressing, so note that the function that we're looking at starts right up here. Uh, it has its own address that it believes it starts at. Um, and that address is actually the very first instruction where that starts. All of the components in the column on the left hand side are all addresses. If you take a look at the column in the middle, um, everything in this second column corresponds to machine code. If you look closely, you'll see that that machine code is in little endian format. For the most part, we're going to be interested in this third column over here, which is our assembly code. Some of the control structures, um, such as a jump, will make reference to addresses. Those correspond over here to those virtual addresses that the function believes it has access to. Um, the second thing to do is to actually chunk this into um, pieces that work together to perform a function. Um, and we're not talking about the functions that correspond to the C code. We're talking about what do individual pieces of code do. So for instance, these two lines um, make a record in the stack. All of the information in call E saved registers. The second set right here, all of this uh, saves a canary into the stack. Both of these are boilerplate and typically happen with every function. So 
we have a function call that is reading six numbers. Um, what do we have to do to prepare for that? We make sure that if we're using that return address, the return address has been started or initialized at zero. Um, we make sure that we keep a copy of where we were in our pointer stack uh, in RSI. And then um, after we call read six numbers, then we want to compare uh, what came out of it. So in this case, the comparison that we're making is asking if uh, the number at the top of the stack is equal to one. So if that is not equal, then we're going to jump to an instruction that will explode the bomb. So to interpret this, um, if the number at the top of the stack is not equal to one, then we're going to explode the bomb. Now we're getting ready for the second part. Uh, and if you're wondering, how did I know that this is going to explode the bomb? Well, we've still got this address right here that's 1691. If we go look at 1691, that is the call to explode bomb. So what that means is that um, if, if we did have uh, exactly one as the first number that was read in from uh, this read six numbers function, then we are going to want to skip over that instruction. That's what this piece over here is doing. This is a uh, jump instruction without condition. So then what are these additional pieces doing? So these two instructions here are setting up for a for loop. Um, RSP is the uh, top of the stack. Currently, the thing at RSP is this one that should be the first number that was read in. We have a getting moved into RBX. This is effectively our, our iterator for a for loop. So think of this as being our pointer that keeps track of where we are. Similarly, then this load effective address, um, that's our pointer to where to stop. So on our second note on Jamboard, um, we have a piece that we just discussed. Uh, that's right here. This is where it uh, jumps over the call to explode bomb. I'm going to highlight both of those here real quick. And here we're going to set out a place where we can track a few of our variables. RBX in particular is our pointer to uh, what value we're currently working with. RBP is our pointer to what value we want to stop working at. These values start at uh, RSP for RBX and then RSP plus uh, hexadecimal one four for RBP. So now the code that we haven't gotten to yet. We have a jump that takes us down to uh, this place right here where we are moving the current value of uh, memory at RBX into EAX. So right now that's one. Then in the very next line, uh, we're going to add the value of EAX to itself and then save it back into EAX. So one gets added to one and then the value two gets saved back into EAX. 
So in this very next line, um, now we're comparing to see whether that new value of EAX is the same as the next integer in the sequence that was uh, input on the uh, input line. Right now that should be the second integer that was uh, input in our sequence of six. As long as these two numbers are the same, this next line is going to jump us back to the top of the loop where we start with adding another uh, uh, integer to the uh, RSP, so that's a size of four. It's not the same thing or more than RSP plus 14 uh, so we continue on without jumping. That means that the uh, value in memory that was stored at RSP plus 4 then gets saved into EAX. Uh, that value, as long as everything uh, worked out, would have been a 2. So it gets it saved into EAX. Y yes, this was already a 2. Now in the next run of this loop, the uh, same way as the previous, the AX gets added to itself and then saved back. So EAX was 2, so 2 plus 2 gets saved to EAX, so it's now 4. Um, now we check to see is EAX the same number as uh, the next in the sequence. So in this case it's the third integer, so the third integer should be 4. So because that number is worked out, it should be the same as the third integer that we put into our input, uh, we go back to the top of the loop, uh, rbx becomes rsp plus 8 rather than rsp or rsp plus 4, and we check it against rsp plus 14, it's still not that big. Our AX gets updated to the next number that we input in our sequence, uh, which according to the last iteration should be 4. Uh, 4 plus 4 gets added for EAX, and then saved back into EAX, so that's now 8. We check that 8 against the fourth integer in our sequence. Uh, and so long as it checks out, we go back to the top of the loop. But I think that we've gone through enough at the moment to have a pattern. So before we go try out our pattern, uh, just a reminder that there are three boilerplate things that are happening at the end of this uh, function. We have to remove the canary. We have to put any callee saved values back. Um, and then we have to return. So returning puts the original uh, instruction uh, after when a call to this function was made back uh, in the program counter. So now that we think we know what the answer is to phase two, we're going to go back and try it. The first thing that we can do Remember what the answer was to phase one. Um, second, let's go ahead and move into GDB bomb. We're going to set a breakpoint for explode bomb. And then we're just going to go ahead and run it. So the first answer for this bomb, there are rumors on the internet that worked. So phase two, we think the answer is doubling each time. So one, two, four, we trace through. The answer after that was eight. Now we have a pattern that we can add in 16 32 for a total of six numbers that are read in. We press enter and it defused. So remember now at this point, 
we don't have to keep going, we can use uh, control C and it got caught. So nothing else is going to happen at this point. We can now quit out of GDB. Happy coding.